Well, I'm David Reed. I'm extension tobacco agronomist here at the Southern Piedmont Center. And a little bit of background, I'm uh, a native of Virginia in Patrick County and, and uh, an alumnus of Virginia Tech. And uh, just a little bit of background on the Southern Piedmont Center. I am. I did my graduate program here, same as, as Joanne and, and several uh, students from Southside Virginia have have done their masters or PhD programs uh, at the Southern Piedmont Center, and uh, certainly we rep I think we represent an excellent educational opportunity for for students within the, the Southern Piedmont Center counties um, and to to go on to a graduate degree. This is our new research tobacco curing facility here, and obviously they're not full size bulk barns. They're single rack barns we can load these with approximately 60 pounds of, of green tobacco and certainly that's not what we'll use on farm but this allows us to do research on very uniform uh, lots of tobacco and we're doing work with uh, different types of tobacco maybe some varieties that are difficult to cure where we may look at develop a new curing protocol for specific styles of tobacco we're also looking at uh, curing protocols for specific leaf chemistry. So we, high, high sugar tobacco in particular is what we're looking at. Uh, so we're, we, we'll, we'll be able to do that here this season. Uh, this will be the first full season that we've uh, used these uh, barns. Uh, we've got 18 of them. Uh, all of them are computerized. They're, they're on the internet. We can monitor them on the web and uh, automate the cure. The, the curing controllers are, are a little different than what our growers have. We can divide the cure into nine different stages and program everything um, across nine different stages of the cure. Uh, in addition to looking at leaf chemistry, you know, the, the reducing sugars, we're looking at low alkaloid and low nicotine tobacco, and, and that requires some different curing protocols there. Uh, for our extension program, you know, we may have growers that are having curing problems. The tobacco may be going dead or black in the barn. Uh, we can suggest that they do something different in the cure, but now we can take some of that tobacco, bring it here, put it in three or four barns and cure it under three or four different uh, curing protocols and see if, if we can address what the curing issue might be with a specific uh, lot of tobacco. So that's what we're doing here and uh, we're looking forward to getting this, uh, really getting it underway for this growing season. So my name is Caleb Hinkle. I'm a graduate student here at the Southern Piedmont Center. Uh, my degree is in crop and soil environmental sciences. Um, I'm also uh, working on the program for the remote sensing here at the Southern Piedmont Center, uh, where we use drone technology um, and special cameras designed to view the field in ways that the human eye can't see. Uh, this data is then processed later so that we can uh, make better informed decisions on uh, plot research we're doing, as well as some on-farm trials that we're doing. We also do this in uh, flu cure tobacco, burley, dark, as well as some hemp studies we've done recently. Uh, my, again, my program is, is tobacco agronomy, and you've seen the barns uh, next door where we're doing the curing work. And uh, uh, just one of the projects that I'm, or several projects I'm working with this year is looking at uh, the yield of tobacco and just trying to do whatever we can to increase the yield of, of our flu cure tobacco. The production costs are very high. The prices we get for the tobacco are not going to be increasing. So we've got to uh, look at how can we produce as high a yield as possible every year, regardless of the weather, try to do the best uh, we possibly can uh, to increase our yields to spread the production cost out over uh, more pounds of tobacco so the per pound cost uh, comes down. So we've got uh, some studies looking at root stimulants. Um, and, you know, we, that may be a limiting factor with our tobacco. You know, you, certainly nutrition is not a limiting factor. So we're looking at, at roots and, and trying to grow as robust a root system as possible so we can you know, have a plant that can sustain the, the stresses that we can have, just like right now uh, with the dry weather we've had the last couple of, of weeks or more. Um, how can we produce a, ro a robust root system that can, can that tobacco can sustain the stress. Uh, we're looking at, at soil moisture and water and irrigation regimes. And we've got some drip irrigation studies. Uh, not because our growers will necessarily use drip irrigation, but we can use drip irrigation for a, a more controlled irrigation study and, and irrigate small plots. And uh, one thing I want to show you is, is some of the technology that we're using. These, this is a soil moisture probe, and actually this is an older probe, and we've got updated ones this year. But this was one that 
uh, had a cellular telephone uh, uplink to go to a, a satellite and then we could download the data from the web and you see the the bands here are where we're measuring soil moisture as well as ion contents. We can measure fertilizer uh, at different depths in the soil profile. Just show you an example of, of some of our uh, test plot work, our, our research plot work. Obviously we're doing work on very small uh, research plots. Each row represents one 272nd of an acre and that's what this sign is here. It, it, uh, this plot is 40 feet long. And, uh, and what we've done here, this particular test, is a, a side dress fertilizer test. Obviously, that's, we've done side dress fertilizer work for, for years and years, but we're continuing to look at different materials. And now what we're doing, we're doing more tissue analysis work. So we've just topped this tobacco this week. We pulled some samples off uh, every plot, and we're looking at the tissue analysis of the, of the leaves. And we're also, we can also come in here with this instrument. This measures chlorophyll, so we can clamp that onto the leaf and measure chlorophyll in the leaf. Um, Caleb, is he's got a, another instrument that we have. That's a spectral radiometer. And that's measuring the light reflectance across about 2,000 bands of, of light. And we use that data just to analyze what's going on with the plant. So obviously, uh, we can see what the visual color of, of it is. But uh, he's measuring probably. Uh, Three quarters of what he's measured is outside the visual spectra, so we can look at a lot of other details. So that's what Caleb is doing there. This is the first year that we've uh, ha actually had any significant amount of hemp research. We've had a, a, a test the last two or three years, a single test maybe. But this year we've got uh, the variety trial that you see behind us here. Right now we've got 20 varieties in here. We're going to plant two or three more varieties tomorrow to, to finish everything out. Uh, we also have uh, an herbicide trial here. We've got a, a pretty large uh, leaf spot trial, and then we have a, a, an insecticide trial, and we're monitoring just insects that are going to be on the hemp. And a lot of the disease work is we're just simply going to monitor um, the diseases that occur and, and look at some of the mortality factors that we see with the hemp. And then the final trial that we'll have is a, 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 a fertilization trial. And uh, we'll just look at some different fertilization rates and timing uh, for our, our fertilization. The the hemp the variety trial, we're you know obviously going to be looking at yield. We're interested in the yield of the hemp. Uh, we're also going to be looking at chemistry, and we've got some CBD varieties, obviously, as well as a couple of CBG varieties. But we want to look at uh, you know sample throughout the year. We've got two row plots, so we'll have one plot row of the plot that'll be for yield and the other row we'll be looking at chemistry specifically and looking at the balance between THC which we don't want to have and, and the CBD and CBG that we want to, to actually harvest. Okay I'm Chuck Johnson uh, I'm the plant pathologist here at the Southern Piedmont Center near Blackstone Virginia and uh, a plant pathologist works with diseases of plants like a medical doctor works with diseases of humans and a vet works with diseases of animal, farm animals and pets and whatnot. I work on disease problems on plants. And the way Virginia Tech's organized, uh, we have commodity responsibilities, so I don't work officially on soybeans or corn, or stuff like that, but I work on tobacco and I work on small fruits like strawberries and starting last year, work on hemp. So I have the way we're organized, I have research and extension responsibilities, uh, which means that I get to do both, um, which is fun, but it's also stressful. Um, so this space here, and this, this is the lab area uh, that I work in and people who work for me work in. Um, so we do a lot of our work with uh, microbes because, of course, working with diseases, we're working with germs, things too small to see. So we have to go through some extra hoops trying to figure out where they are, what they are, when they're causing a problem and when they're not, and trying to help farmers figure out what to do if you have a problem. So this area we use for research as well as for extension. Um, you can see we've <coughs> they're, they're kind of shut up now, but we've got a bunch of uh, microscopes set up around here because a lot of times what we will do is we will go out in the fields and we will collect samples and then we will bring those samples back in the laboratory and then we will 
have to go through various procedures to try and figure out what kind of microbes may or may not be present. And sometimes we can look through a microscope and see them, and sometimes we can't do it uh, quite that quickly or that easily. And so sometimes we have to try and grow those microbes in the laboratory. And so what we it's kind of old-fashioned technology. What we have to do is try and grow those microbes in petri dishes on specialized media so that those, if the microbe is in a sample, then it will grow out and we can see it and we can look at it under a microscope um, and we can figure out what it is and work from there. And that's what uh, Tori's doing back in here is she's making media. She's actually working, uh, we, we're starting to see disease problems on hemp this week. And so we have samples from a nearby farm and we're trying to grow out whatever might be on those samples, trying to figure out what's killing that hemp. And then we'll go from there to figure out what can a farmer do from that. Um, but we, do, we go through that process uh, for all the crops that we work in. So we do, we do that, that's kind of an extension uh, function similar to there's a there's a special clinic on the main campus in Blacksburg that's all they do here at, at Southern Piedmont Tidewater Winchester Hampton Roads Painter we do that in addition to the research so a lot of for example one research uh, function we do in here is so plant parasitic nematodes or microscopic roundworms that live in soil or problems on a lot of field crops like tobacco um, a lot of people are interested in them now with soybeans and corn and peanuts and other crops. So what we have to do there is we actually go into the field and we collect soil samples and we bring those soil samples back. We have to actually float those nematodes out and catch them on special screens. And then we again look at them on microscopes. Hear a lot of talk about detecting viruses. So, you know, that's been an issue we've dealt with in plants for a long time. Uh, and what we use some, actually use some similar technology that people have been hearing about um, on the news quite a bit. So one, one virus issue that's really old in the, in the tobacco world is tobacco mosaic virus. It was actually the very first virus that was ever characterized or understood to be a virus 150 years ago. Um, but it's a big problem in tobacco because it's very, very infectious. As uh, Joanne and other people can tell you, if you're working in the tobacco field, you get some some infected sap on your clothes and you walk through the field you can spread that virus so it's it, it's uh, it's a big it can be a big issue and so what we what we can use is is very we have identified or we haven't as in Virginia Tech but scientists have identified specific antibodies that can recognize very specific proteins that are unique to a particular microbe and so when you hear people talking about like with coronavirus and has somebody been exposed in antibody tests, that's exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about that your body has produced antibodies very specific to that virus. If we can figure out what those proteins are in those antibodies, then we can test to see if you've ever been exposed. Or we can test a plant sample to see if that virus is actually in there. So we... we can actually use that here. One of the advantages of these tests with plants is that they're very quick. So as I mentioned, we're doing research and extension in here, so if we can do things quickly, that's a big help. So we have, it has a bag like this here. It has plastic mesh inside. So we can take a, a tissue, say if we were testing for, TM, for tobacco mosaic virus or TMV, we can take a, a piece of leaf tissue, maybe about as big as a quarter, we can stick it in this bag that has some special buffer with different compounds in it to recognize, to extract what might be in that, in that tissue, right? And then what we can do is we, we can crush that tissue in this bag and then we can take one of these little strips and we can stick it down into this bag it comes in contact with that buffer and what happens when we do that is that the the buffer is absorbed by the paper in this little strip and works its way on up and then the system works very much like a pregnancy test or other tests that people are familiar with that the red bands will form 
across this paper strip. One, if you only see one band, that tells you, well, your test was good, but it didn't find anything. Two bands means that it did find whatever you were looking for. So this is, we call, I call this a serological assay or an immunoassay, but um, this is something that we use here quite a bit for, especially for tobacco, but also for, um, for strawberry pathogens as well when we know what we're looking for. One of the issues with hemp right now is it's so new, we don't even know what to look for. And unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation running around or information that it might be good or it might not, but nobody really knows. So that really makes it complicated. So I'll just to give you an idea of the kind of uh, techniques we use around here. You know, in the future, we hope to use more molecular uh, methods, uh, but we're not quite there right now, but that's something we're actively interested in and working toward. Hi, I'm Katie Payne. I'm the Applied Forge System Specialist here at the Southern Piedmont AREC in Blackstone. So here we have 120 acres of grazing area for research and we have a 40 acre area for silvopasture research. Um, we also have area available to do plot research. And right now we have two novel tall fescue variety trials going on um, where we're looking at the beneficial effects of the novel endophyte within that tall fescue. Um, we also have a warm season, a native warm season variety trial that has 20 different varieties of native species like switchgrass, big blue stem, and Indian grass, and eastern gamma grass. We also have a 15 acre area in our grazing pastures that, will, that have been established to demonstrate some grazing on those native grasses. And we, over the winter, we had a cool season annual mixture study, cover crop study, um, that looked at different mixtures of grasses and legumes that you may follow up after a tobacco crop. And then um, we are collaborating with Dr. Wade Thomason on a summer cover crop study as well. So those are some of the things that are going on here at Southern Piedmont in forages and livestock. Thanks for coming out for your virtual tour of the Southern Piedmont AREC today. Feel free to reach out through your county extension agent if you ever need anything.